Bless the Lord, O my soul, blessed art thou, Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all he hath done for thee, who is gracious unto all thine iniquities. We have seven young men who are here right now who are part of the Salish Brotherhood, which is a gathering of young men uh, from the ages of 17 to into their 30s or whoever knows what the future will be. Uh, I, I established this group many years ago with the idea of building up support because you young men need support in your life from fellow Orthodox Christians. Uh, ultimately, we're going to have about 15 young men here. Uh, the others haven't arrived yet, but I'm going to do a post for my YouTube videos, uh, and we're going to start here, and then there'll be more uh, later this week. So God bless you, and I'm really happy to have you here. Uh, it's the one time that I get to be Grandpa, so thank you. Many years ago when I was speaking at uh, St. Nicholas Ranch uh, in Dunlap, California to the Orthodox Christian Fellowship, uh, there was a regular uh, event there and every year I would be one of the speakers. And I generally, uh, there was a nun that, that sort of corralled the young women, and, and I corralled the young men, and, and, uh, and then we had uh, group sessions together, all of us. And it was something that I really looked forward to. And unfortunately, it's no longer held there because the East Coast people who controlled the organization decided that it wasn't enough people, even though we had 60 the last time I was there. I hope you hear this. Uh, but one of the things that I noticed with these young men was that these were guys that pretty much got to see each other once a year. And they were really bonded as friends, but only once a year in person. And then I remembered that in Russia, and I believe in Greece, there was this tradition of uh, lay men's brotherhoods. And, and, the, and the lay brotherhood was a gathering of, of men who, as young men, were bonding and giving each other support. And in giving each other support, not only for just the life's challenges that we all face, but that continuity uh, with friendships. I remember one year when I was still teaching in Portland, there was a hotel restaurant that I used to go to on a regular basis. And, uh, and I would sit usually at the counter and there was a big round table that once a week had a group of women sitting around, middle-aged women. And then when I was about to leave uh, to move uh, back to Berkeley, I told the waitress that I wanted to pay their breakfast. And then I went over to that table and I leaned down and I said, I just want you to know that, that it's been a joy to see you once a week sitting here together. I've paid for your breakfast but I'm curious, who are you? Why are you always here together? Well, it turned out that they had gone to a prep school in Portland together. And that when they graduated from this Catholic prep school, they made a pact that they would always stay together, that they would get together once a week. And there they were. And then one of the women said something that I never forgot. She said, it's really important because 
We don't have to introduce ourselves. I don't have to tell these people who I am and what my history is because they already know it. And so we cut to the chase and we are getting together because we love each other, because we're best friends, and we support each other. And then years later, when I am looking at these young men at this retreat in Dunlap, I'm seeing the potential. So I proposed this to the guys. Uh, I think the last count we had something like 85 or 86 people that joined. Uh, the Salish Brotherhood, we refer to you as the Knights of the Salish Brotherhood. And a Salish, of course, is because Vashon Island is surrounded by the Salish Sea. The Salish Sea uh, uh, incorporates the Puget Sound and it goes all the way up to Vancouver Island in Canada. The wonderful thing about this brotherhood is that, and I've witnessed this over the years, that you support one another. Uh, you have your own uh, uh, Facebook page, uh, your, what's the other one that you use? Uh, Telegram. Telegram. And, and I rarely get involved, but I read them because it's inspiring for me. So Grandpa stays out of it. <laughs> but Grandpa is happy knowing that you guys have each other into your next stages in life to be supportive of one another. Uh, if you're girlfriend breaks up with you, you've got your buddies that are, are supportive of you and help you get through it. Uh, if you decide to get married, you have a whole slew of guys that could be your best man. Uh, it, it, this is something that is really in many ways missing in our society today because people are so focused on their laptops, and on text messaging. Uh, I remember once I went into a coffee house owned by a Palestinian Orthodox Christian on the north end of the Berkeley campus. I hadn't been in there in years and I walked in because I had gone to another coffee house that on the opposite side of the campus that had been a hangout of mine in my college days and my graduate school days. And it was closed and it was being turned into a fast food place. And Shakespeare's bookstore on the corner had been, was, had been turned into a coffee house. And I looked in the window and I thought, I don't want to go in there because all it was a sea of laptops. No books, nobody interacting with one another, a few people texting, that was it. So I decided to go to the North End coffee house that, that had been another favorite place of mine. And I walked in and I saw the same thing. All these laptops open, nobody communicating, no books, no friendships, no signs of friendships. And I thought, this is, this is terrible. It, it is, it is a absolutely terrible thing. <clears throat> so my friend and I, got cappuccinos to sit outside at one of the tables in front of the restaurant and on our way out the owner is walking in and he says oh father i haven't seen you in years and i said oh why i said you know we're going to sit outside because i can't bear to look at what's going on inside with all the laptops and, and the text messaging and he said the guy that made you your cappuccino is my son and recently I turned over the business to him because I can't stand looking at this either. It's painful for me. So, so we are really living in a different age. Uh, it's an age where people are being further separated. The danger for this is that because we are being controlled by what we read on our laptops and even how we think, and even our spirituality is being controlled. And because it's being controlled, we're seeing a country, the United States, changing before our eyes. 
It's becoming a country that's controlled <coughs> by the wealthy, uh, the high-tech people. They even, in my opinion, control the White House. And, but we cannot allow them to control us. One of the things about orthodoxy that we often forget because we are so influenced by what's going on around us is that orthodoxy is meant to be lived daily. It's not something that we, like some go to denominational churches and they put their hands up and they praise Jesus and the rest of the week they're just doing their thing. They don't even think of Jesus during the rest of the week. But we Orthodox Christians cannot allow that to happen to us. Every single moment that we are awake should be focused on the inner life, bringing healing to the eye of the soul that the Lord implanted in us when we were conceived in the womb. This is the ultimate goal of every Orthodox Christian who's serious about their faith. Now, what does this mean? Does it mean that we can never go to a tavern with our friends? Does it mean that we can never laugh at somebody's jokes? Certainly not. I've been told by one of my priest friends that I'm referred to as the stand-up priest comedian. <laughs> That's my dad and me, because my dad was a golf pro as a kid, used to embarrass me uh, with his humor and his outgoing nature to everybody, even strangers. And when I turned 50, I looked in the mirror and said, oh my gosh, I've turned into dad. But what it really means is that even in our moments of humor and lightheartedness with our buddies, we need to be focused on the fact that we are Orthodox Christians. And what does that mean? It means that every aspect of our life should be governed by our faith. I wrote an article for my uh, blog a number of years ago in which I, I, I commented that as Christians, if we're sitting, say, in a student union and we're hearing somebody gossip about somebody else and we just sit there idly and let it take place, we're guilty of gossip. Even though we said, have said nothing, we're guilty of gossip. If we're sitting there and someone in our presence makes a racist remark about a black student sitting across at another table and we say nothing. We're guilty of racism. So being an Orthodox Christian means to be committed in every aspect of our life. Everything that we do, everything that we face, needs to be tethered, if you will, to the church, to what we are going to do as Christians. I remember years ago, there was a couple on the island that owned an import business, and they, they import and sell Hawaiian shirts and over a few, few, few years they gave me three beautiful Hawaiian shirts. I have never worn them publicly, but I have worn them under here. Someone else gave me a, a tie-dye shirt and on occasion I've worn it under here. Because I do like a little color in my life. It's just that nobody knows about it. Because as a monk, 
and as a priest of the church, I have to live my faith fully and never setting anything aside. As a, as a priest, I have an obligation to image the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ everywhere I go. I remember once I went to the uh, Pike Street Market in Seattle with a Catholic priest friend of mine from Montana. And as we were walking into the market, a homeless man came up. He was a Native American from Alaska, and he put his hands out and he says, Father, may I have your blessing? And so I blessed him. And then he said, would you pray for me? And I said, certainly I would. And I took my cross and I went like this and I placed it on his head. And then I stood back and I put my hand over him and I asked God's blessing on him to help him with the struggles that he was going through. And then he walked away. And my friend said, you notice he didn't ask me to pray for him or to bless him because I'm in civvies. I've had people in San Francisco, Berkeley, and Seattle, and even New York City come up to me and thank me for dressing as I do as a monk. And almost every time they have said, you're bringing Christianity into this secular world that is devoid of in any images. But not only am I to do this, you're to do this. Every waking moment of your life should be focused on Christ and be and your faith in and your walk within the life of the church should be your priority not anything else this should be your priority and so as members of the Salish Brotherhood you you support one another with this endeavor and it makes it a lot easier and then when you have children, they will see in you the image of Christ. And it is a known fact that when the father is a churchgoer and prays at home with his family, the likelihood of his children remaining in the church soars. But those fathers who are Sunday churchgoers and show no sign for their children that they're praying during the week, and they don't become the, the priest of the domestic church for their family, will have lost their children. And think of what impact we can have if we take all of this seriously on everyone around us, our neighbors, people in the workplace, even our boss, Think about it. So God bless your journey. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Only begotten Son and dear.